I made an application like Twitch in 24 hours and this is how I did it. Step one of this process is of course trying to figure out how you're going to build this, like just planning it out. And so for planning it out, I had a general idea of how I wanted to get things done. I wanted there to be a way that you could see the current live streams and then also how to start a live stream. And so in order to incorporate those elements, I needed a backend service such as Firebase. And then we also need another backend service that is specifically going to be handling the live streaming aspect. Now 100ms, they sponsored this video. I'll talk about them more on how to integrate it into your application and whatnot a little bit later in this video. And they are essentially like a third-party library that you can plug into your application and get really easy live streaming. And also for those interested, I'll be hosting a webinar on their YouTube channel on November 9th at 10 a.m. in which we're going to be building a FaceTime clone. So check it out in the link in the description down below. Then finally, once you have all of that figured out, I went for the design. Now, in order to get design inspiration, I really like to go to dribble.com and then there's a few clones. And the one that I liked most was this one right here. And then finally, once I was all prepared for that, step two building the project. And so once I started building the application, the first thing I wanted to do was create an onboarding screen. And so this onboarding screen right here is essentially a tab view with three different onboarding views inside of it. You can clearly see this over here. If I go to the onboarding view, uh, you should be able to see this here. So we have the tab view, onboarding screen, and then we set the tab view style to page with no index display mode. And that just allows it so that we can easily swipe between these different views. Looks pretty sweet, I think. Then also behind, underneath this, we just have some simple buttons. So get started and I already have an account. So get started, of course, is going to be like you're signing up. So then you can add your profile image and then you're also using your name, email, password, blah, 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 and you create the account. And all of this is happening through Firebase. And so I don't really need to worry about too much. Uh, you just basically import Firebase and then say auth to auth, create account. And then if you already have an account, go through the Firebase authentication and then you sign in through that way. So once you actually do sign in, you are brought to the home view with my very secure password of password. So then we go to the live streams here. And as you can see, this is the first thing that loads up. It's just a bunch of the current live streams. All of these are actually dead at the moment. I need to fix it where we have past live streams that are kind of grayed out and you can't click on them anymore. Uh, but right now I don't have that. So you can click on them, but nothing's actually gonna show here. Uh, but this is essentially the, the plan that I wanted to go for here. This is pretty simple. If we go to the home view back here, uh, we just essentially have a state object. That's the home controller, which holds all of the, you know, the current posts. So if I go to the home controller that shared, you can see we have a function called load posts in which this just adds post directly to our published post. It's just, it's just an array of posts. And then we have a scroll view, lazy V stack, and then a for each statement, which basically adds this uh, each time. And then what view are we actually going to be showing? It's going to be the home view cell, and which is pretty simple. Uh, I just basically have an H stack up here with a V stack to the side of it, and then a bunch of images. And then from here, I also had this tab view that I worked on in the past, and I really like this effect where it just kind of glides back and forth with this dot. This was super simple to do. Uh, so if we go to the snitch tab view, uh, you should be able to see, you should be able to see this overlay tab view uh, in the which we just basically have a button and we have a match geometry effect button here. And so this match geometry effect here is just the circle and we say dot. And then we have that for both the uh, explore page as well as the profile page. And so once you click and you're going back and forth between the two, it checks and sees if it's the current index of what you're going back and forth between, and it loads it up accordingly. And that just gives you the kind of cool uh, gliding effect. Currently, I have nothing in the profile page, but we'll see if I add something there in the future. <laughs> and then finally, we have the posting view here, just to clarify. So I designed this. Again, I, all of this was design at first. I just added dummy data here at first. And then this was also dummy data. Uh, but now it's all functioning. So that's what I like to do is first design, implement, and then finally add the functionality. Now I might have focused a little bit too much on the design at this point, but hey, I was in it for the long run, I guess. <laughs> so now going past the design, let's actually figure out a little bit more how this works. So first and foremost, you need to sign up with an account and then you need to create a new application in the which you give it an app name. If I were to say, you know, something here, and then we can say my region is going to be US. 
and then choose a template. So they have different templates here. They have audio rooms in the which you can create something like uh, Clubhouse or video conferencing or virtual events. You can do anything like that. I personally went with video conferencing, although it probably would have been better to go with virtual event now that I think about it, but too late. <laughs> uh, and then you can go ahead and set up the application. It's going to register your domain and we're good to go. And so you can see that we have the backstage, the stage, and then also the viewer. So if I go back to my dashboard, let me go to actually the template here with video conferencing and I can kind of show you how this works. Essentially people can have roles, how you would have in Twitch, you have like moderators and whatnot. You can have different roles for the people that are viewing the video or creating the video. So of course you have the host, uh, the one that's actually going to make the video. And that's what I have here. When you create a room, you are a host. Now for the guest, I have it so you can't share audio, can't share video, and you can't share the screen. You can't really do anything. You can only really view what the host is doing. Uh, in the future, you could of course implement it so it's more like a video conferencing application in which if you want them to share a video, you can do so. Then you have this awesome developer page in which you have your email, app access key, app secret, customer ID, app ID, token endpoint, all of this stuff just right here. Now in order to create a room, this is not something that you can actually do from the client side. Uh, so once I swipe here, I need to call up to my own server, which then returns a room ID. So if we were to look into this, I swipe, it then moves over to this function called create room, which then calls my server and specifically accesses this post function called create room. And so if we look at that, uh, this basically just has uh, first and foremost, this is essentially a basic express documentation here. Uh, then we have var generate access token. Uh, this access, generate access token is found inside of their documentation right over here. So if we go to authentication and tokens, you can see this Node.js function right here. And I essentially just copied and pasted that. And then in order to create a room, if you look here, we say create room API, we have to access their API v2 slash rooms. And we have to feed it that token that we just created. So now if we go back here, that's essentially what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm basically saying request.post in the which I'm accessing that uh, URL. And then we're giving it the bearer token that was just created from up here. And then now this returns a newly created room. And so once I get that room ID back, uh, that's when I say, okay, everything has been created. So now I can set the current token, uh, you know, the, the actual video that we're, or the room that we're inside of right now. And I set that, I say my room is created, which then pushes me over to the posting view in the which this starts uh, my HMS SDK. I say HMS SDK dot build. I set the current track to my local track. And then we start essentially watching the video view here. So this video view is something inside of the HMS SDK. Uh, in the which I took something that they had called an HMS video view and I converted it uh, from UI kit to Swift UI, uh, just by simply making this UI view representable and it's scaled correctly. Everything seems to be working just as it should. And so now we're getting a local feed inside of the application into our video view. Now, the other part of this that is also really important is we need to join the room. So in order to join the room, we have a token provider here. Now I'll link where I got this token provider from. Uh, it's from a, one of their example documentations. Uh, but essentially we just say token provider dot get token in the which this get token calls a token endpoint in the which this token endpoint can easily be found inside of here inside of developer. Um, and then we also feed it a room ID. Right now this is static, but I'll make it dynamic in the future, but we're just getting a token for the same room each time. So it's no biggie, but <laughs> that's how it's working at the moment. Um, and then we get that token back, we join it, and then we say, uh, set mute to false and then we start capturing meaning we want to basically we are the ones talking because this is when we're posting right we are the host uh, so we're the ones talking and we want to show our video so that's what this all does and it also of course asks permissions so if we were to go to my info.p list uh, I also added a few things for privacy reasons. So like privacy, local network usage, camera usage, and microphone usage, where it basically just says, uh, we want to use your camera for this purpose. Are you okay with that? And then you're of course going to say yes, otherwise you can't use the application. So once all of that is said and done and everything is created, we created the room, we joined the room, 
everything is good to go. That is then posted up to Firebase like, hey, we got a new post. And then people can click on that inside of the home view and join your stream. And it's basically the same thing. So if we look at my uh, watch view, uh, you can see the exact same thing. So we token provider, get token for the current room. And our role is going to be guest instead of host. And then we join, we set to mute true, and then we stop capturing, meaning we don't want to share video or audio in any way, shape, or form. Now, something else to note here for each of these views, so for the posting view finished and the watch view, we have a view model attached to this, which has an HMS update listener. Uh, so anytime we receive something back from our, uh, one, from 100MS, say someone joins the room or someone leaves the room or something like that happens or a track changes, uh, we can react accordingly. So on reconnected, on disconnected or reconnecting, you know, we can do things accordingly. So this is important to note uh, for when people do end the room in the future, I want there to also be like, hey, uh, the host has ended the view, so then the watch view closes. So that's where I would add that type of functionality in here as well. Or if you're going to have multiple people inside of the broadcast, that's where you can say like add a video or you, you know, you add another video into the array and you build your view accordingly, something like that. But for now, fairly simple. We have one video, it's streaming to everyone. And then finally we hit the 24 hour mark. This was, this next part of the video was literally recorded at midnight. And I was super proud of this moment when we actually had the entire application fully functioning in all the best ways. All right, so this is the end, basically. I'm sure I'm going to be uh, making this a little bit better as things come along. But essentially the idea is we're going to have our host device. And so if I have this here, I say hello, or give it, you know, give it a name, a room name or title. And then you put a category. Right now the categories don't exactly work, but I'm imagining the categories in the future are going to be like, hey, uh, this is gaming or this is, I was just chatting or something and a certain image pops up to, according to that. But right now it doesn't work. So once you got that posts, uh, it has to call up to 100 MS's servers. Those send back and now we're doing a live video feed as you can see here. So that looks great. And then if I wanna watch it, I just click over here uh, where the table view is basically constantly updating. And then also you should be able to hear the stream as well. And that, that, that's essentially the idea. Now, if I knew a little bit more of Node.js, I think this whole process would have been a breeze because I spent four hours on creating a Node.js file, which probably should have taken like 10 minutes for most people. So that was the big problem that I ran into with 100MS. Other than that, perfectly fine. But yeah, there you have it. That's like the basic overview of everything I did in like 24 hours. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was a little bit insightful. I found this a lot of fun to do. So thanks to 100MS for actually pushing me to uh, do something like this. I will take any sponsorship that tries to make me do better uh, and I appreciate it. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and if you didn't, be sure to send it to someone you hate. And yeah, I'll see you guys. See you guys. See you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>